How about now? Let me know if you can hear me now. Give it a couple seconds here. It takes a little while for it to pass through. But if you can hear me now, let me know, please. All right, there we go. I think we got it. There we go. One small setting got changed. And apparently, that boogered everything up. There we go. Everybody's happy now. Seeing a lot of comments come through. Thanks for that. Little glitches here and there. They happen. Good to see everybody. Happy Sunday, March 5th to you. My name's Chris. I run uh, Dark Blue Charters here in Manistee, Michigan. We do these live streams covering salmon and trout fishing and Great Lakes fishing in general every Sunday night at 7 p.m. We try to do a topic every night, but uh, there's a great, great um, community here. Great, great, great community here. So welcome, everybody. We jumped up over 100 viewers just like that. I want to go back and check some of the chat that I missed, so give me a sec. Bear with me. I see Leroy Dowding is here from Purple Taco Fly Supply. Good to see you, Leroy. We're going to talk about some things regarding Purple Taco Fly Supply here in a few seconds. And pardon me, I am a, I am a one-man show here, so all of the... All of the graphics, all the all the all the sound, all everything is run by myself. Right down here in my beautiful basement studio studio. I don't know if it's very beautiful, but that's where I'm at. So hey, cool. Pat Enos is here. I see a lot of army members on here. Fishhawk is here. Uh Jim Dabrowski, Mark Pearson, Dan Canham, all army members. Ron Wagner as well. Will Spencer also. Good to see everybody. If you want to join the Tangle Tackle Army, there's a lot of great benefits to doing so. And uh, the link to do that is right down below in the description. Patrick Forrester, another Army member here. It's, <clears throat> I enjoy watching everybody that's in the uh, Tangle Tackle Army. I can see the uh, the badges next to their names. I'm sure you can also, but I watch them rank up through the months. And it's pretty cool to see uh, see people growing in rank. Mike F. saying, I've come a long way from the garage days. Mike, I know. But I kind of miss the garage days, too. And I know, I have no doubt that I'll still be doing some videos out in the garage every now and then. But <clears throat> Hey, Bill Gerlach, another Army member. Good to see you. So, yeah, I like doing that 10-minute. Uh, I like doing that 10-minute uh, lead-up intro, whatever you want to call it. I like doing that because everybody gets, if you don't have the notifications turned on, First off, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications just by clicking the bell. And that way, every time we go live, you're going to get a notification. I think it's generally through email. And if I do that 10 minutes early, like we've been doing for the last few times, that gives everybody a notification. They got time to, to get their phones out or whatnot or whatever they want to watch on, grab a drink, um, sit down, and uh, just get ready for the show. So it's been uh, it's been working well so i enjoy doing that and if you notice i put a timer on there also now so say you watch this you know two three days from now because i had a comment last week saying somebody asking if this was a scam because the, the intro was going but i wasn't on there yet so but with that timer being on there then you know you can just fast forward through that until you get to the to the to the video so anyway <clears throat> Well, Spencer, yeah, out of the back of the truck. I Videos like that are still fun to me, guys. I like doing videos like that. I mean, you guys know it doesn't matter how many fancy lights or graphics or anything I put up. This is still just your basic run-of-the-mill. I mean, I'm never going to be so fancy. I, I'm not comfortable in my garage. Mark J just threw me a super chat. Thank you, Mark J. I got something for you just for that right there. There, so thank you for that super chat, Mark. I appreciate that, buddy. I had some new graphics I put together for that reason right there. <clears throat> All right, Scott Cleland, going well. How are you? Jay Forward, good to see you. I'm looking forward to our trip this coming uh, summer. Tony, oh, Tony, I am going to apologize in advance. Tony Busflug, Bus Bosflug? Just became a Tangle Tackler Army member. Thanks for doing that. Very cool. 
Anyway, yeah, like I was saying, it doesn't matter how, how many fancy lights or anything or graphics I put up. This is still, I'm never going to be, you'll never buy my opinion, and I'll always be true to whatever I say on here. So um, I never want to be an infomercial, and I've talked to I've talked to sponsors about that, and luckily nobody's ever asked me to be one. They know that I'm always going to give you my honest, unfiltered, unbiased opinion on things, and I never want to come on here and just talk about Dreamweaver, 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 because then I'm just a, I'm an infomercial, and I don't want to come on here and talk about Purple Taco or Coast or anything like that. That gets real old real fast. I watch videos too, guys. You know that. And... Uh, Somebody's saying the audio's tripping out. It's interesting. Okay. Now it's saying uh now it's saying it's all good on my end, so maybe might be something on your end. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. I'm never gonna be an infomercial and you're not gonna buy my opinion on anything. If I tell you that something's garbage, it's because I truly think something is garbage. If I tell you something's good, it's because I truly think something is good. All right. Eric Nearing, good to see you. All right. So a couple things we've got to talk about before we get into tonight's topic. Uh, tonight's topic is salmon spoons and some secrets and tips I can give out to you. And then I'm going to go on to the Tangle Tech website, which you're going to be able to watch right along with me. And I'm going to give you some great examples of some of the spoons that I love. And I'll even tell you if I think they're a morning spoon, a bright day spoon, a dark day spoon. Give you some insights on when I run them and when I know other captains run them as well. So. We're going to do that, but a couple things first. First off, uh, in the past, I asked you all to send in your Purple Taco Fly Supply Fly Creations to me because we are doing that fly contest. If you don't know what I'm talking about, search back a couple weeks ago, or I'll put a link right up. It's going to be one of these corners here once this thing edits. Uh, we're, we're having people send in flies to us, the top five flies that we think are going to be great producers are going to be chosen. And they're going to go on the Purple Taco Fly Supply catalog, along with the creator's name and whatever the creator named that fly. So, excuse me, as of right now, I've gotten about a dozen submissions, and I would like the sample size to be a little larger than that. I appreciate everybody that did send them in already, but it could be the mic. Yeah, Eric, it could be. Hold on. We'll just move that. Um, so it could be, uh, I'm sorry, it could be the mic, could be something else, but we'll see what that does. Anyway, I've gotten about a dozen submissions so far. I would like more than that for a greater sample size. So I'm going to extend that period of when that, the, that deadline rather to the end of this month. So I need to have those collected by the end of the month. Please send them to me at the Tangle Tackle Shop in Manistee. Their website is down below, and on that website is their address right on the first page. Just put on there, attention, Chris, uh, fly submission, something like that. Don't forget to include the recipe, your name, and the name of the fly, and we'll take a look at them. But uh, let's get those sent in, and it, it's going to be pretty cool if your fly gets chosen. And then if you're looking at some outdoor forum someday and somebody goes, I caught it on the <laughs> the purple wank or whatever. <laughs> I don't want to say what I was going to say there, but. You know what I mean? It could be pretty cool if you saw your fly being being out there catching fish. So anyway, please get those sent in to me. Again, I'm extending that to the end of March. Also, a couple of weeks ago, Scott and I from Dreamweaver, and don't forget all these live streams are proudly brought to you by Dreamweaver Lures. Check them out at the link down below. The best on the lakes. Uh, no doubt on that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Scott and I did a real upgrade video on the drag upgrade video where we showed you how to upgrade your stock drags to the carbon fiber drags that you can get at tuna at tuna's real troubles that was a fun video but we need to extend that to include line counter reels also so this coming week i think tuesday or wednesday i'm heading back down to dreamweaver to talk to scott and we're going to complete the video we're going to show you how to do the the line counter version so that's coming up here in a few days also. Reinhardt, what's up with you, man? Also, here's something I'm pretty excited about. Oh, yeah, Leroy, thanks for throwing that out there. There is a $50 gift certificate going out to all five of the people that are, their flies are chosen. So if your fly gets chosen, not only do you get fame and fortune, 
you also get a $50 gift certificate from Purple Taco Fly Supply, which is really nice of you for, uh, but really nice of you to do that, Leroy. I'm stumbling on my words tonight. Lever drag reels, John Levitt. They fall under the same category, I believe, as what we did last time, so should be good to go. And no, no two liter today, Rick. Today I got some uh, orange Gatorade Zero. Got to stay hydrated in case you ever get dehydrated. And sometimes everybody gets a little dehydrated, sometimes on purpose. All right, here's something I want to talk about real quick, and then we'll get into the topic. Uh, and, well, I'm sorry, li or we'll get into the fishing report and then the topic. This coming Saturday, we're starting something at Tangle Tackle. And this is really, really cool. We are starting second Saturday scavenger hunt. So this is the idea. This is the plan. Every second Saturday of every month. So that will be next Saturday. Throughout the shop, on that Saturday, from beginning to end, you're going to find... There's going to be five to ten items hidden throughout that shop. They're going to be hidden. They're just going to be in the wrong places. You might find them on a windowsill. You might find them behind a T-shirt. You might find them. You'll find them within the shop, not in not in non-employee areas. They'll be somewhere hidden throughout the shop. On those items, say this is one of them. Uh, on the back, it's going to say it's going to be signed by one of us, and it's going to say prize. If you find one of those in the shop, you get to keep that for free. That is now yours. So we're talking like spoons moonshine spoons dreamweaver spoons maybe spin doctors maybe meat rigs maybe flies something like that anyway five to ten items will be hidden throughout that shop on that day every second saturday of the month you find it you keep it for free also there's going to be 10 tags hidden throughout the shop which are going to say i'm not i'm not sure what they're going to say yet they're going to say grand prize entry something like that you find one of those take it up to the counter you go into the grand prize drawing along with anybody that finds one of those items. So you find an item or you find a tag, you bring it up to the counter, your name goes into the grand prize book, and sometime in the month of August this year, we're going to draw a winner for a $500 trolling package for one of those people. So every second Saturday, come to make some plans. Come up to Tangle Tackle. It's about that time to buy gear anyway. Come up to Tangle Tackle, dig through the shop, Find a free item. It's one per person. One per person, okay? So if you found one already, you're out for the rest of the game, okay? But one per person, one per customer. You find that item, it's for free. You keep it for free. If you find a tag, and a tag counts just same, you can't find an item and a tag, you get both. Find an item or a tag. You find one of those, bring them up to the shop, the shop counter. You go into the book, we draw a name in, in August for that winner. And I can tell you, one of the things that's going to be in next Saturday's scavenger hunt is going to be that knife that I sharpened a couple weeks back on that video. This thing is razor sharp. It's a 10 inch uh, salmon fillet knife. It's a pretty decent quality. Uh, that's going to be hidden somewhere within the shop. I snuck it back into the package. That's going to be in there for somebody to find. They'll have my signature on, I don't know, maybe on the handle or somewhere on here so you know that this is the one. And uh, you take it up there and you get to keep it. One other thing that I forgot to throw out there is one of the items throughout the shop on every Saturday is also going to say T-shirt on it. You find that, that says, you find the item that says T-shirt, you get to pick out a free T-shirt also from the shop. So there you go. Tell me what you think on that. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's kind of cool. I mean, I'd like to go in there and dig around and try to find some things. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. All right. So anyway, we're moving on. Fishing report. Let's do that. And then we will talk about the topic of the week. We don't see that every day. There we go. Fishing report for the week. <clears throat> All right, fishing report for the week. Ice fishing, guys, gals, it's getting sketchy. I mean, really, really sketchy out there. If you're going, I'm still seeing some shanties out there. Not not the uh, the permanents, but the portables. If you're going out there ice fishing, please be careful. It's going to get bad quick. Uh, pier fishing has been good around here. People going out on the piers and throwing spoons. 
Spawn, and even some stick baits have been catching browns, steelhead, and a few lake trout roaming around. And maybe even a couple of bonus walleye are rolling in already also. I would stick to spoons if it were me. Little Cleos, uh, the greens and the blues, chrome green, chrome blue. Those things, you can't be, they can't be beat this time of the year. So if you're heading out of the piers, just make sure the ice is gone before you do that. Head on out, throw some spoons out there or whatnot, and see if you can catch something. Surf fishing, I haven't heard anything on surf fishing, but I typically, I know that typically when the pier fishing starts heating up, surf fishing can be really good also. So if you're going out there surf fishing, grab some spawn bags, some big, some big long 12-foot rods, head out there, put the waders on, chuck it out by that third sandbar. Put it in a rod holder and see if you can catch something. You're going to get steelhead and you're going to get lake trout, maybe even the occasional brown trout out there as well. And that can just be a blast. Uh, river fishing has been good. Lower section of the river, I think, has been a little better than the upper section. Been mostly beads. I have heard a few plug bites come along, but mostly single beads. Natural orange and natural yellows have seemed to have been the best lately. By natural, I mean non UV, just your standard egg sack looking. Uh, your standard egg sack looking bead. Um, yeah, so river fishing I think has been really good. I think that should heat up even more. I was supposed to go river fishing with Kyle McClellan this last Saturday, and Kyle called me Friday morning, sick as a dog. He and his girlfriend Maggie are both sick. I felt bad for him. He felt bad. Uh, so we're going to reschedule into April. So that's going to be coming out. It is what it is. I was bummed. But I get it. I run a charter also. If you get sick, you get sick. And Kyle felt horrible. But um, that's fine. We'll get back out there. I actually grabbed my $100 steelhead rod challenge package, and I walked out, and I tried to go and do a little bank fishing. Excuse me. And every place I went had people. Uh, I went to Horseshoe Bend. I went to Bear Creek. I went to High Bridge. I went down to Tippy. Tippy was uh, pretty busy. And it just, there's people everywhere, and I didn't really feel like messing with it, so packed it in for the day. That's fine. I'm going to try to get out maybe tomorrow or maybe even uh, Tuesday, see if I can get out there with that $100 steelhead challenge gear and get, get one caught. So what else do I got for you for fishing report? Oh, boats going out on Manistee Lake right now, uh, catching some perch out by the number nine buoy. Also trolling around. Uh, I know this time of the year is great for just a nice slow troll around Masty Lake, around the contours, flat fins or flatfish rather, maglips, hot and tots, body baits, great for steelhead right now. You can really tear them up some days. So if you're looking for a place to go throw your boat in, head over to Masty Lake. It's wide open right now. You can do it pretty darn easy. Scott Argetsinger is here from Dreamweaver Lures. Good to see you, Scott. Um, Scott, of course, is a moderator on here. You can see the blue tag on his name. And uh, if you have any questions for Scott or Dreamweaver, hey, throw them out there. That's what he's here for. Eric's Adventures Fishing. Didn't I get a jet boat? I ordered a jet boat, Eric. It won't be done until September or October. So if it's ordered, hopefully it'll be coming. If it comes before then, that's great. I'm not going to get much of a chance to use it then, but uh, when it gets here, it gets here. I'm looking forward to it. It's a stealth craft. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. All right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move around here a little. Let's get into the topic of the week here. We're going to be talking about salmon spoons. Scott Argetsinger being here. We'll be talking mostly, you know, mainly about spoons that he's very familiar with. So, Scott, feel free to jump in. But let's get into the topic of the week. All right. Topic of the week, salmon spoons. What are they? How do you use them? Guys, gals, I know a lot of this is going to be old hat for many of you on here. Bear with it. Bear with me, but better yet, throw your two cents out there also. That's what the chat is for. What am I missing in the chat, by the way? What am I missing here? A lot of people talking. All right. Um, salmon spoons. So if you, there's really, if you think about salmon spoons, they're completely different from casting spoons. A casting spoon, say be like a daredevil or a, a little Cleo, something like that, is something you're going to put on a rod and reel. You're going to throw it out there. 
and you're going to crank it back in on your own power. And that action being pulled in is going to be what imparts the movement onto that spoon going through the water. A salmon spoon typically is much bigger than one of those types of things, and we'll talk about that here in a second. The trolling spoons, salmon spoons, are what you put out behind the boat, and the boat going through the water, pulling them through the water, is what imparts the action onto those spoons. There's typically two or three different size spoons per manufacturer. So with Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver has four different size spoons. If you think of Stinger, Stinger has three that I can think of right off the bat. If you think of Moonshine, they have two that I can think of right off the bat. Uh, you know, there's several other companies out there that have different size spoons, and they're all called things a little differently. So if you really want to break it down to simplicity, I think of the first size being their micro spoons. And this is a Dreamweaver WD spoon. WD or WB? I think it's WD. And that's the smallest variety right there. These things are absolute bonsai for walleye. Walleye, perch, pike, bass, you're going to nail these things. But there's also a great way to fish these micro spoons for salmon. And I'll talk about that more here in a few minutes. The next step up is the Dreamweaver Super Slim. And this thing is generally the crescent wrench of all spoons out there because it does everything. This thing at slow speeds, high speeds, <laughs> bright days, cloudy days, you name it, that spoon right there is one of the spoons that will go out there and catch you fish really when a lot of other spoons are failing to do that. So the Dreamweaver Super Slim. And I'll show you these all size comparison here in a moment. Now, if you're talking about like Stinger, or Moonshine, the SS would be more compared towards the Stinger's Stinger size. Uh, the Moonshine's maybe their standard size. But the next step up is the DW size for Dreamweaver, or a lot of people call this size the standard size. A little bit bigger than the Super Slim, a little wider. A little longer. Different, th different thing down here on this end. You see there's a split ring down there. Hooks, hooks are the same. A little heavier, different, little, little different plating. But that's the DW size or the standard size. A lot of places call them. Um, and again, if you look at different spoon manufacturers, you'll see that a lot of these are, tip are in similar size fashion. Regardless of the name, don't let the names fool you on these things. If you just get your hands on them, go into a bait shop. Hold a couple of them up in front of your face so you know what size spoon is the same as this company's size spoon. Don't get caught up in the names. It's easy to get confused. When I first started salmon fishing and I heard, you know, we're, we're nailing them on stinger stingrays or, or mags or, you know, I was like, Bleh, what? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but as I got in more into it and I could tell the difference in the sizes, it made a lot more sense to me. So don't be afraid to go into a salmon shop and familiarize yourself with the sizes. And then typically the biggest size is the mag size. And that's that one right there. And I'll show you compared to that last one, the size difference also. Also wider, also a little heavier, also has a split ring at the bottom. And we'll talk about the split rings here in just a few moments. That's a very common question. I'm surprised, I'm sure there's one in the chat. Um, some, yep. Uh, Fishhawk, want to know about split ring. We'll talk about that here in a second. But I want to show you guys and gals the size differences, if, if I can, without hooking myself completely. All right, hold on here. You know what? I got a better idea. Let's do this. I hang them right here on this knife. Micro size. Super slim, standard, or DW size, and then the mag size. Look at that. When I use my brain, sometimes good things happen. So you get an idea of the different size levels. I'll be honest with you. The spoon I use mainly, that one right there, the super slim, right there, I'm sorry, I was pointing at the wrong one. Super Slim is by far my go-to spoon day in and day out. My second one is the Mag. I'll be out again. I'm I'm being honest. 
I don't run many of the standard or the DW size. And the only reason I don't is because the, the SS size and the mag size do so darn well for me. I think I just overlooked the mag or the, uh, the standard size. So those two right there are my, my bread and butter out on the boat day in and day out. Mostly the super slim. This thing will catch fish for you, whether it's springtime, midsummer, or late August, early September. Uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't really seem to matter. They love that spoon. <clears throat> Excuse me while I get a little more little reorganized here. A couple things you have to note on speeds when it comes to spoons. The SS spoon or super slim spoon, a lot of S's in there, is incredibly speed tolerant. By speed tolerant, I mean you if you get up over three miles an hour, 3.5 miles an hour, it's hard to blow that thing out. I mean, you really can't get that thing rotating. Very speed tolerant for high speeds and low speeds. By low speeds, I mean all the way down to like 1.5. And I think Scott will probably chime in here and say what um, what maybe the low end speed on that SS is. I know 1.6, 1.7, 1.5 even, that thing's still doing absolutely fine down there. The mag spoon, on the other hand, these things really start performing well when you get up to 2.3, 2.4, even 2.5. 2.5 might be the best speed. But I'm never hesitant, and I know some guys will look at these and go, there's no way I'm running that thing at two miles an hour. But I'm a slow troller, especially in the mornings. I don't put a whole lot of speed into the boat. I'm 2.0, 2.1 to 2.2 normally. I run a ton of mags at that speed, and they constantly catch fish, constantly. So if people are out there telling me you can't fish a mag spoon, a mag spoon at a slow speed, they're wrong. I do it all the time, and I catch fish on them all the time. They do wonderful. There are some spoons that outperform. Some mag spoons outperform other mag spoons at slow speeds. The Fuzzy Bears by Dreamweaver are a great example of that. The Fuzzy Bears by Dreamweaver, um, the, the orange slice, the blue slice, and the green slice, and the What's, what's the other one, Scott? Help me out. Uh, the half green jeans, half blue jeans. When Scott put those in my hands last year, when they first came out, I ran those things. They absolutely crushed the fish at slow speed. So a little lighter spoon blank, a little bit easier to go through the water, less weight to pull. And I'm telling you what, those fuzzy bears at slow speeds, I'm sticking with them for a long time because uh, <laughs> they absolutely work. Um, of course, you're... Your smaller, your micros right here. These season, these things are designed for your slower speeds. They're a very light spoon. I would be very hesitant to run these things anything over 2.7 or on up, maybe 3.0. I don't know how they would perform at those higher speeds. But at your slower speeds from like probably 1.2, 1.3, maybe 1.0, up to 2.0, 2.2, they're going to be a great, great asset for you. And, of course, remember, I'm always talking at speed at the ball. I'm not talking about speed over ground. Speed at the ball at my fishhawk probe is what I'm always talking about when it comes to speed. Fishhawk just asked around mags during the fall. Man, you run a ton of mags during the fall. And that brings me into something I want. We're going to talk about some tips and tricks here, but here's an early one for you. If I'm cleaning fish, and this happens sometimes, if I'm cleaning fish in, in May, and typically I'm finding bait fish in May that are about, the SS, the SS uh, size. They're not typically that big, but if I'm cleaning fish and I'm pulling the alewives out of there, they're the mag size, guess what I'm running the next time out? I let the fish tell me what they want. They may have all giant alewife out there at that certain time. That's the big alewife coming through there, and that's what they're gorging on. So if you run, if you run a super slim, and there's a whole bunch of alewives out there that size, guess what they're probably going to be chewing on? Probably the bigger ones. Get that feed bag on. So open up your fish, take a look in the bellies, look at what they've been feeding on, and judge, you know, match the hatch. Match the hatch is a great term to use, and it works. Base your size spoons on what you're seeing in the fish's bellies. Go If you're not catching fish or you're just getting out to the, the fishing area, go down to the cleaning station, take a look in the gut buckets and see what you see in there for bait fish. That'll tell you, that'll tell you a lot. All right, speeds and depths. 
We already alluded a little bit to speeds. Like I said, the, the, the SS spoon is pretty much the Swiss Army knife. That thing performs great at all different speeds. The DW or standard size, also just a little heavier, but also a good low speed spoon. You know, 2.0 to 2.5, somewhere in there. Really, really good spoon. <clears throat> the mag, like I said, I run this thing at slow speeds. If you're hesitant to do that, that's fine. There might be a few more fish out there for me, but this thing really, really comes to life at like your 2.3 to 2.4 to 2.5. Depth wise, I don't run many spoons. Uh, there's no real floor that I can say. There's no real number. Past 100 feet, I don't run a whole lot of spoons. The, you know, by saying that, though, I'm thinking of a few times when I have run spoons past 100 feet. But typically, when they get below 100 feet, you're starting to look more into the big paddles, uh, the big meat rigs, uh, big flash or fly combos, things like that. Spoons really seem to, show, to shine and show off at 100 feet on up. Now, again, I've caught fish. I've caught fish, you know, see, I've, I've run one spoon down at 110 and I've had a slider, a set slider 10 feet above it, and I've caught fish on those. So I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying you're probably going to have a better, a better showing, a better bite running, running your flasher flies, your meat rigs down at those deeper depths. Excuse me. Um, but again, don't, don't be hesitant. If you want to try it out, please do. <sighs> Split rings. And somebody, somebody already asked about this. You notice on the uh, Super Slim, compared to the Mag, the Mag has a split ring on the bottom. The SS does not. And Scott, I'll be happy if you chime in on this, but what I understand is that split ring helps these heavier, heavier spoons get a little more action. Whereas the SS and the WD have no split ring. They don't need them on there for that action. They're a lighter spoon. You don't have to have that added that added maneuverability on there to get those things going. So hopefully that will answer a lot of those questions because that's a very common question that we get. The seasons. When do I run spoons? And I'm going to give you the obligatory answer right now that every year is different, and that's true. But for the most part, um, Dan Cannon's already asking about the hooks. I'm going to get to that, Dan. Um, for the most part... You cannot beat a spoon springtime into June. You know, as J late July gets here and August gets here, and a lot of people want to run over and grab all plugs, all meat rigs, all flash or fly. But don't disregard a spoon in those time of the, that time of the year. The, the, these spoons, last year, I'm telling you right now, we had three three thirty pounders hit the deck last year on my charter. All three came on spoons. One was in late August and two. I'm sorry, one was late July and two were in August. And we caught fish all year long on spoons. Spoons were, were the absolute standout for us last year. Outfished everything, probably two or three to one. Easily, easily. So don't be afraid to throw, you know, even if you're hearing, hey, my buddy next in the boat next to me says, oh, they're, get, they're catching them all on plugs. Don't, don't be afraid to throw a couple more spoons out there. These things are going to catch fish for you. And again, that also preludes into what size am I running later in the year because people talk about August. August rolls around, you run everything big. Well, I'll tell you what, these SS or standards or micros will still catch fish for you in August. Again, if you're cutting the bellies open or looking in the gut buckets and you see a lot of small alewife, there's a good chance that that's what they're, they're tuning into right then for whatever reason. Let the fish tell you what they want, match the hatch. And don't be afraid to run those smaller spoons even into the late season. <clears throat> Brian Kerber, that's a really good question. Something I was going to talk about: swivel size. People want to always, or people always want to know what size swivels do I run on spoons? I run size ones or size twos. Uh, Dreamweaver DS ones or DS twos. And Scott, I believe that's the right uh, vernacular for that. Uh, I like the smaller swivels, and they have no problem keeping a keeping these spoons moving the way they should and they they're tough as nails i've had i've had one swivel break and by break i mean the actual swivel came apart like here's the bottom here's the top separated right at the swivel joint and i gotta think out of the thousands of spoons that i've run over the years to have one ever fail me 
I'll take those odds. So DS1s or DS2s, I love those sizes. Uh, DS3s, a little bigger than my taste, uh, what I like. But DS3s are a good size for spoons also. So <clears throat> very, very good question. The other question I wanted to circle back to was hook size. People always ask, or it's a common question rather, what size hooks am I running? Can I change the hooks? Can I go to a single side wash hook or a smaller treble hook? I don't think there's any problem with that unless you start monkeying with the weight. So if you take, say, this giant, I believe that's a number two hook right there, or um, eh, it might be a one, I'm sorry, probably a one. If you went and put that onto that, that SS, that Super Slim, you're going to completely booger up the action on that SS. And ask me how I know that. I've learned that the hard way. So if you're going to be changing hooks around, make sure you're at least matching the weight from one hook to the other. Otherwise, you're going to be, you're going to be killing your spoon action. Trust me from experience on that one. I've exper experimented enough on that crap where I know, <clears throat> I know that what works. Dreamweaver knows what works. Moonshine knows what works. Stinger knows what works. Um, Silver Streak knows what works. And they all know that because they test their spoons. And I don't go messing around too much with things that, that work. And these hooks, albeit not the greatest in the world, they're VMCs. You know, they do take a great point and they do stay sharp. And they don't lose a whole bunch of fish. So DW is doing something right. Most of the big manufacturers are definitely doing something right. All right, some tips and tricks I want to throw out there. One of them I kind of spoke about already. I talked about that micro spoon or that WD spoon being able to be used for salmon. And my buddy Jim stumbled on it. I don't know if he stumbled onto it or he knew about it or whatnot, but we were, uh, we were fishing a tournament one time. We were doing well, too. And we got into a lull. And Jimmy grabbed one of our sliders, one of our free sliders, and put out one of those micro spoons on that thing. And that thing fired off probably three or four more times within the hour. And ever since then, I have been a fan of running these micros. If I can't get the SS to work or a mag or a standard, I am a fan of taking some of those micros. Like Stinger calls these things scorpions. Dreamweaver calls them WDs. There's a few other names out there. I am a fan, though, of taking those things out and putting them on free sliders. I think that the action being so light, you know, you don't get a whole – sliders can't be more than six feet long. We all know that. So you don't have a whole lot of line back there to really let this thing get a lot of good action. But these things being so light, these things really move well on those short leads. So I am a fan of that. And take that and use it, and hopefully it catches you a 40-pound king. Uh, but it does work. It works very well. A couple other things I want to talk about before we jump into the website to show you some of my favorites. We'll, we'll talk about this actually more then. But um, glow versus non-glow, UV tape versus non-UV tape. You know what? It's going to be a lot easier if we just jump into the website and I can show you those things there. So let's do that. You guys, I'm not going to be able to read questions here until I really I get done running my mouth. So if you got questions, feel free. And don't forget, at the end of this thing, um, at the end of this thing, after the visual, the live stream's still going. Once I shut down the visual, the live stream is still going on YouTube. I will be there in the chat section. If you have questions that I missed, stick around, and I will be there to answer things in the chat. And, uh, yeah, be happy to help you out there also. So. Don't worry. Let's, though, jump on to the Tangle Tackle website. Put that there. Knock that down. Let's look around here, and I'm going to talk to you guys and gals about some of my favorites, and maybe, not maybe, but when I run these things, when I like to run these things. And I'm going to try to firecracker these things off as fast as I can because there's a ton on here to go through. So starting right off in the beginning, this one right here, the uh, glow frog with the white belly has to have the white belly. That thing in the super slim 
lights out for me year after year. Wonder Bread right there. It's a great glow spoon. Love it in the morning. If you if you stop losing bites or if you start losing bites on that thing as the sun comes up, take it off. Maybe think about putting out the uh, the Super Bread, which has an RV tape on it. I believe it's the Super Bread or the, the UV Wonder Bread. <clears throat> the MBK been around for years. Great, great spoon right there. The Blue Dolphin. This thing, this thing is as old as the Great Lakes, and this thing catches food or catches fish still year after year. If I was going to look across here, the Wonder Bread in the morning, great, great glow spoon. The rest of these I can run almost any time of the day. The Buffalo Bill, great early spring spoon, for, especially for lake trout. The Green Jeans, this thing is a great spoon for any time of the year. really takes off late July and August. Uh, there she is right there. That is... <clears throat> that's in the DW size, so the, the the standard size. But that thing right there, last year in the mag, and especially the SS size, was by far my number one spoon. That thing is a great spoon. Scott came up with that last year, and I'm glad that he did. I run that thing all year long, and it catches fish all year long. There's your super bread. I was talking about that a little while ago. Anything where you see DUV. Double UV, so you know that that thing has a UV tape on the top of it. That thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that thing you also see is a super glow and a double UV. You can take a spoon like that. You can fish that thing early morning, like before sun up, because of the glow properties. But after the sun comes up, you can leave it out there because it has that great UV quality to it, a lot of shine, uh, and it'll keep catching fish, fish for you. As the day goes on, Magic Man, absolute steelhead destroyer right there, absolute coho destroyer also. That PK Special was a spoon that somebody turned me on to a few years ago. I love that thing. Another great high, high sun, bright sunny day spoon. This UV Two Face, you can see the bright quality of it. It's got a chrome blank, UV tape on it on the back. Another UV tape and dots. One thing that we've learned over the last, I don't know, Scott, chime in here if you want, but five to seven years, dots have just gone crazy on the Great Lakes. We found out for whatever reason, salmon love dots. <clears throat> all right. Beef feeder, another great all-day spoon, especially that WB beef feeder right there. Very similar to the Mongolian beef made by Moonshine. We'll look at some Moonshines here also. Uh, there's some swivels that we were talking about. All right, so here's the Rasta Goose. Now, this is a good spoon, but with the gold blank on it, I have found that that spoon is fantastic. But both of those right there, the, uh, the, the Rasta Goose and the gold Rasta Goose will catch you fish. Uh, okay, and here's that uh, Wonder Bread I was talking about, where this one you could really leave out all day, especially if it's... I mean, if it's getting bit, that's kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? You leave that out there. But you could leave this one out even if it's not getting bit because there's a good chance it's going to get bit. It has that UV tape on it. <clears throat> a little better look there. All right. Now, one thing I want to mention here, I didn't before, and I apologize. If you take a look at this spoon, chrome blank, right? Very, very high shine chrome blank on this thing compared to the super bread or the wonder bread or a lot of other spoons out there white blank you wouldn't think that that would make much of a difference but i have found that these white blanks black blanks purple blanks really seem to shine more in your darker days foggy days cloudy days things like that the whites blacks purples things like that those darker natures seem to shine more in those days <clears throat> just scooting through a few here. Here's that gold Rasta goose. This thing is a monster. I call this thing just the golden goose now because it catches so many darn fish. Just a good, good spoon. Spotted Magic Man over here, another steelhead destroyer. And uh, you'll see most of these are out of stock right now at Tangle Tackle, and I apologize for that. There's nothing I can do about it. We'll be reloading here in the next few weeks. Just getting ready for summer. But uh, jumping through a few more here. Now, here's just the regular green jeans without the, the UV tape on it. <clears throat> Great glow in this thing. 
I would not be hesitant or I wouldn't be afraid to run this thing in the morning, but come if it's going to be a really, really bright day, I'd be more apt to throw out the UV or the RV version of that thing. Fireball, that thing is a steelhead destroyer. Mixed veggie, this thing catches everything. There, there's hardly a day goes by I don't have that thing out there somewhere in the spread. That's just a good spoon. Jumping back through a few here. There's that two-face, great, bright, sunny day. Caramel dolphin, I haven't run this thing in a few years, and I don't know why. It's a really good spoon. I used to destroy the fish on this thing. I need to think about running that some more. That's a good spoon. <clears throat> and you get into more of the, I mean, you can look at like the show car here or the yellow leopard. These are all WVs. You can think about these things being out on those bright, bright, sunny days. You can see those UV properties and those spoons. All right, moving on. Pink panties. <laughs> that stupid spoon. I don't know why it catches fish, but it does. I, I ran that thing on uh, when I was mating on another guy's charter. I was the only guy that run that spoon. That thing caught fish all the time. Uh, there's the WV Blue Dolphin. So, if, and don't be afraid if if the standard spoon. So, like if you're running a normal Blue Dolphin, and you're not getting anything on it, don't be afraid to run a WV or a UV version of that same spoon. It could be just the thing that puts them over the edge. That thing somebody brought to the boat for me a couple years ago, and said that was one of his best spoons. I'd never run it before. Handed me one. We put it out on a 225 copper, and we had a fish on within a few minutes. So that thing has become one of my go-tos on darker days, that laser glow spook. That's a really, really good dark day spoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make sure we're still going okay here. There we go. Chili Willy, been around forever, especially the green Chili Willy. Love that thing. Bloody nose. Uh, early morning, just the regular bloody nose, the glow. That thing is a great, great spoon. And uh, that thing with the UV tape on it throughout the majority of the day. That thing on a 150 copper, 200 copper, 225, 250, <clears throat> just does great. I've never had a whole lot of luck on anything past 300 on it. So if I run that thing on a 300 copper, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to produce as much as on my shorter, shorter cores and coppers. Maybe it's me. It probably is me. Who knows? Uh, Hitman, another great, great steelhead spoon. Greasy chicken wing. This thing is dynamite around the pier heads late in the season when you're combat fishing. I love running this thing in that dirty water. That thing really does well. <clears throat> Back through a few more. Again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Riverside, great steelhead spoon. That super lemon on a on a uh, on a real high line, like a two or three color. That thing can be really, really good some days. Michigan dolphin, another great. There's so many variations of the of the blue dolphin and the green dolphin, like the blue dolphin glow, the Michigan dolphin, the modified blue dolphin, the holographic blue dolphin. The Captain Mary Michigan, uh, Captain Mary, <laughs> you kill me over that. The Captain Gary Michigan Dolphin. Those are all variations of the Blue Dolphin, and they're all worth checking out. Now, Rod Father is brand new last year, I believe it was, and I didn't get much of a chance to run it, but I like the look of it. <clears throat> Jordo, that thing, if I'm offshore fishing, uh, especially the UV Jordo, if I'm just out there, specifically targeting steelhead offshore, probably half my baits are going to be that Jordo. That thing is really, really good offshore. Goldilocks, that's the gold blank of the double orange crush. Can't go wrong with that thing. Everybody filling out their Christmas list as I, as I go through these things. There's so many good ones. But there's there's some there's some ones that really stand out also, really really stand out. Starburst is another one right there for steelhead. We'll catch kings also. <clears throat> Jaeger bomb, another good steelhead. Well, really a good multi-species spoon right there. 
NBK. I already talked about that. What a great spoon that is. There's my glow frog with the white belly. That's that's just always out there for me. All right. Got a lot of uh, duplicates here. So just going through these till I get to the end, and then we're going to switch over to moonshine. I'll show you some of my favorite moonshines. That get her done can be really good in cold water and around the pier heads. <clears throat> All right, one more page, and then we'll switch over to moonshine. We'll take a look through there, and we can wrap this whole thing up. Green eye, is that the green eye ghost? Is that what is that what that's called? Yeah, green eye glow ghost. That thing in a in a really dark morning or just morning in general before sunup, that thing can be really good as well. I remember uh, was it Paul Schlafly on Riverside telling me one time, or maybe it was you, Scott, uh, telling me one time how good that thing was for you guys for a few weeks. And it is a good spoon. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look over in Moonshine. How did I get there that fast? Let me make sure I got that right. Oh, do, do, do. Oops, I hit the wrong thing here. Salmon trolling spoons. There we go. Moonshine. <clears throat> the best glow spoons on the market. Dreamweaver. You know that. I mean, everybody out there knows that. Dreamer, Dreamweaver has great glow spoons, but no spoons glow as long or as bright as moonshine spoons. These things are amazing how long they will glow. So, Jump through a few of these here. Some of my favorites, that Agent Orange for Steelhead is great. Um, the Bad Toad in the RV is my preferred. I would take that over the standard Bad Toad any day. And guys, gals, I know I'm probably skipping past some of your favorites. And you can yell at me in the comments if you want to. But I'm going to stick to what I know. So here's a few right off right here that... Uh, are absolute monsters. The Blue Jeans and the Blue Knight, both in the RV and the uh, the standard glow. Fantastic. The Carbon 14, I think is a great, great spoon. This Cyclonite has its days, and it seems like every year for like a week or two, that Cyclonite cannot be beat. The Flounder Pounder, I was uh, mating on a guy's boat, and he refused to run that spoon because it was so ugly. So it was the ugliest spoon ever made. I ran that thing every day, and it caught fish all the time. The Green Knight, the, uh, the brother or sister to the Blue Knight, great spoon, RV and standard. <clears throat> and by standard, I, I don't mean size. I mean without the RV tape. All right, so here's some of these half moons that they have. This is a blue jeans in the half series. So you can see it's a half painted and half just chrome. These things are great. There's that blue slice. Green slice here, the half loaf. Sounds like something that happens after you eat too much McDonald's. Happy Meal, that's a great spoon, especially in the morning. That thing in the morning really does well. There we go. The uh, spoon that caught the state record for Michigan, that 47 plus pound king, the raspberry carbon. Still, I, I refuse to run that spoon for two weeks after it caught the state record because I knew everybody was going to be running that spoon, I refused to run it. And then as soon as I did, the thing was destroying them. That is just a good any time of the day, any presentation spoon. <clears throat> the Sandbur. I like this spoon, especially in the RV. So it has the RV tape on it. That thing on a downrigger for me catches a lot of fish. 
That Stripe Tastic was good for me last year in early August for about a week. Uh, I was running that thing on a free slider on my on my port side out and down, and it took a bunch of fish for me. <clears throat> of course, the Wonder Bread got to have about five Wonder Breads on the boat. Blue Jackal, especially in the RV, another great early morning downrigger spoon. Shelly Snack, uh, this thing is also out in a, in a Fuzzy Bear version now. That thing took uh, one of our 30-pounders last year in the Fuzzy Bear version, not the Moonshine, the Fuzzy Bear. <clears throat> and there's that glow bloody nose in the RV take. Again, that thing is fantastic for me, like on 200, 250 coppers, 150 coppers, things like that. And you'll see that a lot of these spoons, you have a standard version or the uh, non-RV version, and then it will almost almost always have the RV version where it has the uh, RV tape on it. There's the bad toad in the RV. That thing for, <laughs> I don't know why that thing took a vacation on me for a year, year and a half, but uh, last year it was back to working pretty well for me. Blue jeans again, blue night again, crab face. That's an overlooked spoon right there, and I don't know why. Uh, I, I really like that spoon all times of the day. I keep that one on the ready. <clears throat> again, you'll see a lot of those previous spoons now here with the RV tape on them. Here's the Happy Meal with the RV tape on it. The Hulk series, are both the Blue Hulk and the Green Hulk are good spoons. There's the Mongolian beef. We talked about that in the Dreamweaver. Uh, they call it the beef eater, I believe. I'm looking for the dancing anchovy. That's been one of my best spoons um, throughout the last few years. Five eyes. That thing one year was absolutely unstoppable. And then it took, uh, it went AWOL on me for a year, year and a half, two years. It didn't run it much last year, but I know it's still a good spoon. There's the Flounder Pounder in the RV. So I just missed a whole page here. Let me back up a page. <clears throat> All right. I may have gone by that uh, dancing anchovy already if I did. Keep in mind, that's been one of my best spoons the last two or three seasons. Can't go wrong with having a watermelon or an atomic melon out from time to time. They've been around a long time and they do catch fish. So there's the dancing anchovy without the RV tape. I highly prefer it with the RV tape. I've got a couple of those on the boat that the RV tape is basically shredded off of them because uh, the fish have been chomping on them so many times. All right. So that might look similar to that other spoon that might be called, <laughs> you guys know what that looks just like in the Dreamweaver um, section. I think this is the spoon that gave Scott inspiration for uh, – for that other spoon. That's a really good spoon though, that Mean Jeans. <clears throat> Raptor, I like this thing. I run this thing all the time. I like that spoon. All right. We're starting to wind it down here. There was one spoon that I saw. Maybe I saw it back here. The original Moonshine. That thing can be a really good spoon early morning. That's a terrible picture, but that's a decent. We had a, we had a downrigger go off one time. And, well, we didn't see the downrigger go off. All we did is we saw a steelhead come blowing out of the water about five feet into the air. And that spoon was hanging out of its mouth. 
and we didn't know which downrigger or which lure it was or which line it was even on. It hit the water and it was gone. Spit the hook, and the uh, <laughs> the we finally realized that he was on the one of the out and downs. He smacked that thing so hard. All right, let's get back into our into our. There we go. I'm back. Let's see what I've been missing. All right. I've been talking a long, long time. What you guys and gals have for questions? Do you want to talk more about spoons? Anything else? I'll be happy to talk about it. Phil Quinn let me know Dancing Anchovy was on the second page. Yeah, let me go right by it. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's do this. Let me first of all say thanks, everybody, for being here. I do appreciate it. Like I said, we do these things every Sunday night at 7 p.m. We got a lot of great stuff coming out. Uh, don't forget about the second Saturday scavenger hunt in Tangle Tackle. If you missed what I'm talking about right now, go back and rewatch the video. That's going to be a super, super fun time. Um, got a lot of other videos coming out soon. Don't forget, I extended the fly uh, I don't want to say that. the fly applications all the way to the end of March. So if you want to send me in a fly for the purple taco contest, you got now until the end of March. So that should uh, get a few more people to send some in. I want to see what else you guys and gals have out there. Scott Garver's is asking, what is a flutter spoon? So a flutter spoon is really what it sounds like. It's one that flutters. It's not something you troll. It's typically something you'll either cast out or jig with, and as it goes down through the water, as it drops, it flutters down through the water columns. But it's not a trolling spoon. <clears throat> uh, Lloyd Duncan, glow in the spring in the mornings. Yeah. Yes and yes. And don't be afraid to run either one. Yep. Uh, in the springtime, like I said, springtime is a majority of a – it's the majority of a spoon bite. There's other applications that do work. Stick baits work great, body baits, um, some flash or fly, some small plugs, but the majority of the fish caught in the springtime are on spoons. And glow spoons, UV spoons, you name it, they're going to catch fish. <clears throat> Phil Quinn, I know your fly made it to the shop because I looked at it just the other day. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm confirming your fly is at the shop. All right. Let's do this. Let's uh, let's shut down the visual section. Well, actually, let's take a look at the poll so we know what we're doing next week. We'll end that poll right now. So next week's topic, do we want flash or fly? Do we want meat rigs? Do we want plugs? Do we want ninja boards? Overwhelmingly, flash or fly. So that would be next week's topic, flash or fly fishing secrets. Meat rigs was a uh, second at 23%, plugs at 16, ninja boards at 4, 159 votes. That's a wonderful turnout on the votes. Fishhawk, what UV light do you use to charge your spoon with? Any black light is going to do you just fine. There are specific ones on the market. John King has one, and they have a, they have a head on them about as big around as that uh, Gatorade bottle, and there's normally a couple dozen RV or UV lights in there. We're great. Work, work really, really well. Anyway, I'm going to shut down the visual section of this. I will stay on to the chat. So if you got more questions for me, please stick around. I'll, I'll be right there in the chat for you. And we will move on from there. So, yeah, let's do that now. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I will see you all very soon right here on this channel.